Hello and welcome. You join me as I ride off in pursuit of a little road history. Before Thomas Telford's improvements to the London to Holyhead Road via Watling Street, Coventry, Birmingham and Shrewsbury, the old mail coach route to Holyhead was from London through St Albans, Newport Pagnell, Northampton, Welford, Lutterworth, Hinckley, Tamworth, Lichfield, Chester and the Bangor Ferry. It is on part of this older route that I'm now motorcycling on my Royal Enfield Classic 500, just on the approach to Welford along what used to be the A50, now the A5199. There's a turning coming up on the left. Bear this in mind for a moment. Let's take a look at the map. And there is the turning to the left at point A. The logical route to Lutterworth on the mail coach route through Walcott would seem to be A to B through South Kilworth. That's not what the mail coach authorities thought back in the 19th century. They abandoned this shorter route in 1823 in favour of the longer way round. They took the coaches north through Welford, only turning left at sea, cutting a small corner to travel to Walcott via North Kilworth. I'm going to travel to Walcott on the favoured turnpike route via C and return along the route B to A to see if there's a clue why the longer route was favoured. Back to that junction and continuing north on the longer but more favoured coaching route. Approaching Welford. You'll see that once through the outskirts it begins to have all the appearance of a quintessential coaching town. The village was prominent as a coaching stop during the 18th and 19th centuries, lying equidistant between Leicester and Northampton on the main road to London. Some of the houses on the high street are old coaching inns and are named appropriately. Here we are at the start of the old high street. The whole orientation of the place is towards the main road. just around the bend at the bottom of the high street we get to a bridge which crosses the River Avon which also marks the crossing between Northamptonshire into Leicestershire. Here's the bridge and coming up is the castellated tower of the Wharf Inn on an arm of the Grand Union Canal. No doubt it served two sets of travellers where Canal met Turnpike. As I mentioned earlier, I'm now travelling on the old A50, which branched off from the A5 further south at Hockliffe, just north of Dunstable, to travel right through the Midlands, north 
west to end in Warrington. In some respects, the A50 echoed the route followed by the mail coaches prior to Telford's improvements. It was with the coming of the motorways that the old A50 was broken up and downgraded as a major north-south route. Again at this point I'm looking for a left turn. Here it is coming up and there's the left turn at point C on the map cutting the corner just before Husband's Bosworth taking me to Walcott via North Kilworth. This is the route used by the London to Holyhead mail coaches before Telford's improvements caused the transfer to the Coventry and Birmingham Road. However, this old route continued to be used by the mails between London and Chester and the Woodside Ferry at Birkenhead until the coming, of course, of the steam trains. Notice just how flat and level this road is. It's dead straight too. I wonder if it was cut especially by the turnpike authorities in the um, late 18th century. straight through open agricultural land. And just to emphasize that point about agriculture, right on cue, here's a tractor piled high with hay bales. Up ahead is the A4304, the old turnpike which leads to Walcott and after that towards Lutterworth. The mail coach has turned here. There's another wharf on the Grand Union Canal to the left. And up ahead, a bridge which carries the road over the canal. Just here. We're now entering the edge of North Kilworth.
that white three-storied building coming up ahead after the garage is the White Lion, an old coaching inn. And also coming up on a road to the left is an unclassified road signposted to South Kilworth. Formerly it was the A427, the old rugby to North Kilworth Turnpike of 1801. Before the A14 and the M6, this road was the main road to Coventry, following the route of the old Coventry and Market Harbour Turnpike of 1755, heading to Coventry through Lutterworth, Paleton, Stretton under Foss, Prinklow and Binley. There's a long stretch of main road ahead on the way to Walcott. You'll notice again how flat this section of road is. In fact, there have only been at most a few undulations all along the longer route. Most notably perhaps through Welford where the terrain dropped down to the River Avon and we had to climb out again once we passed the Wharf Inn. Beautiful day for motorcycling, incidentally. Bright and breezy. Not too cold, not too hot. Just right. A joy to be out on the bike. That little parking space on the left there, a lay-by, is a section of the road that was bypassed when this stretch straightened out a bend. You can see the old side of the road on the hedgerow there. Right, just beginning a gentle descent down to Walcott Village where I'll be making a left turn back on myself. And this is shown at point B on the map. I'll follow the more logical route that I mentioned earlier back to the starting point A. So I'm there at point B with that sharp turn back towards South Kilworth and point A. That's the turn made. I'll just pull in here to check the map. 
Whether I'm cycling or motorcycling, I always like a map in front of me. I like to see the bigger picture and to see my road in relationship to the countryside around it. So, why was the longer ACB route preferred by the mail coaches to this more direct AB route through South Kilworth? The road historian Arthur Cousins speculated that it was because of the steeper gradients on this more direct route. He also speculated that it might have something to do with the local landowners, the Bray family, who may not have wanted a turnpike across their land. Well, this direct route seems flat enough so far. Although, judging by the map, there are some undulations ahead. It's also dead straight like a Roman road, though I'm not aware of any Roman connections. One thing I do know, this is a beautifully well-surfaced stretch of country lane. Again, it's just a joy to be out motorcycling. And there's South Kilworth up ahead, where the town grew up around the crossroads, with this road and the Rugby to North Kilworth Turnpike that I mentioned earlier. And there up ahead, that white building, is the White Heart, an old coaching inn for travellers along the turnpike.
this is a slightly staggered junction. I turn down here to continue on my way to that point A on the map. At this bridge, we cross the River Avon for a second time, and so from Leicestershire back into Northamptonshire. And along this quiet and lonely road, I have to meet a car at that narrowest point. Coming up is the bridge over the Grand Union Canal once more. And now for those undulations. A climb from this point of 165 feet to the top of Downtown Hill. Yes, I dare say that a coach and horses would have struggled a little, both up and down this hill. Remember there were no steep climbs on the longer route. I must say, however, that this direct route does make for even better motorcycling with its much more varied landscape. So, why was this direct route abandoned by the turnpike trusts and the mail coaches? Whilst I cannot comment on the Bray family's possible objections, I believe that Arthur Cousins was right about the issue of gradients. Having ridden both the favoured route and the seemingly logical but neglected route, I can see that any benefit that comes from the shorter but hillier AB route is diminished a little by the advantages to horse-drawn coaches of the ACB route's relatively level going. But for me that's not the main point. The A to C and C to B routes on the map were already well-maintained turnpikes serving the Northampton to Leicester and Market Harbour to Coventry routes, certainly earning more tollgate money than this shorter A to B route. I think that it must have fallen into disrepair due to lack of funds. My guess is that it was a failed road surface combined with the steeper gradients that made it unsuitable for male coaches.
So, that's my little investigation of a little piece of road history over for now. It brought me out into some lovely countryside on a beautiful day to pursue my love of motorcycling. And so, back to the start at point A, where I joined the old A50. For now, I'm done.